and welcome to KBI's Play Your Song Academy. Today we'll be talking about how to take care of your tuba or euphonium. What we'll be learning about is the parts of those instruments, what not to do, daily care, periodic care, posture, how to keep your instrument safe, and all the cool accessories you can get with your instrument. Today, KBI staff member Jack will be teaching us about the tuba and euphonium. Currently, Jack is getting his euphonium performance degree from the New England Conservatory of Music in Boston. Hi, I'm Jack, and today I'm here to teach you about the parts of your tuba and euphonium. The name euphonium comes from an ancient Greek word, euphonos, which means good sound. Now, the euphonium is played by taking the mouthpiece and inserting it into the mouthpiece receiver. And when you blow into it, the air will go through the mouthpiece, into the mouthpiece receiver, down the lead pipe, past the bell, and into the first valve. And you'll see that there are three valves on your euphonium. The first valve, the second valve, and the third valve. And to go along with that, you have three slides, one attached to each valve. The first valve slide goes with the first valve. The second valve slide goes with the second valve. And of course, the third valve slide goes with the third valve. And there's one more slide that you need to know about on the back. This is the main tuning slide of the instrument, and that can control the overall pitch, and you can keep yourself in tune. Now, we see that there's a little button here, and this is called the water key. Now, some of your friends might tell you that it's disgusting that you're blowing spit out of your instrument, but that's actually not what it is. It's condensed water that's gone into your instrument, because when you're blowing hot air through a cold instrument, it's going to condense. The way to evacuate that condensation out of your instrument is simply to push the water key and out will come the water. Now the tuba, although it's considerably larger than its euphonium brother, is pretty much the same from the technical standpoint. We see that we have a mouthpiece that goes into the mouthpiece receiver, again down the lead pipe, past the even larger bell, and it goes into the first valve, through the second valve, and through the third valve eventually. And we have our three valve slides. And on the tuba, the main tuning slide can be in a few different places. But if you look for a slide on the back that has one of those water keys on it, you can be pretty sure that's your main tuning slide. So, now that we know about the basic parts of our instrument, let's take a look at some things that we shouldn't do with our tuba or euphonium. Never, ever, ever pop your mouthpiece with your hand when it's in your instrument. You see, it might make a cool sound, and yes, it is entertaining to do, but what isn't entertaining is having to drive all the way to your local music store and waste precious practice time to have your instrument repaired. Do not take your valves apart. As you can see in the picture, these valves have lots of parts. And if it comes apart, it's a bit difficult to repair. And it might involve a trip to your local instrument repair shop. Now, sometimes they can come apart when you're taking your valves slightly out to oil them. And that's okay. Just take it to your local instrument repair shop and we'll put it back together for you. Don't lay your instrument down on the valve slides. This can cause your slides to bend and the valves might not be able to go down. Don't throw your instrument. It isn't a football, nor is it a basketball, nor is it a baseball. Keep the instrument safely in your lap, in its case, where it's supposed to be at all times, in your band room or in your practice room. And lastly, never use pliers, a vise, or a screwdriver to try to get any parts of your instrument unstuck. If that happens, bring it to your local instrument repair shop and they'll be happy to unstick any parts for you. Now that you know what not to do with your instrument, let's take a look at things that you should do to ensure that your instrument stays happy and stays healthy as long as it can. Every time you play your tube or euphonium, you're going to want to oil your valves. Now, oiling your valves is important because it not only lubricates the piston and makes sure that your valves run smoothly and cleanly, but it also flushes out all of the dirt and grease that can get into the valves, and it keeps your valves, again, running smoothly as possible. So, to oil the valves, 
you're going to want to unscrew the top valve cap like this. Be sure to hold on to it the entire time because if your valves are working cleanly, the valve might pop out a little bit. So this is the one time, if you have your instrument with you, that you can take the valve all the way out. But we're going to look at how to oil our valves. We can see right here that little notch, which is called the valve guide, fits into a little slot that's inside the valve casing. Now we want to make sure that that valve guide lines up with the valve casing perfectly. Otherwise, we run the risk of this bending and then you might have to pay a trip to the instrument repair uh, shop near you. So, looking at the euphonium, you're going to take your valve about halfway out like this, and you're going to take your valve oil, and you're going to put a good amount around the entirety of the valve, like this. And once you've done that, you're going to slowly let the valve back down and twist until that valve guide lines up with the notch right there. And once we've done that, we're going to screw the top cap right back on, and we're going to continue doing that to the other two valves. Now, it's also important how to put the mouthpiece in properly so you don't have it uh, get stuck and you have to go to your band director or the instrument repair shop nearest you to get it pulled out. So you take the mouthpiece and the shank inserts into the mouthpiece receiver. And to do that properly, we're going to push it in very gently and give it about a quarter twist to the right. And that will friction fit the mouthpiece into the horn. And don't try this at home, but the mouthpiece won't fall out. And to take it out of the horn, when you're putting it back in your case, the procedure is the exact same. Just twist a quarter turn to the left and pop it right out. So now that we've looked at some daily care maintenance of our instrument, let's look at what we can do to keep our instrument running as smoothly as possible for the longest time possible. Every month or so, it's important to check to see if your slides need greasing. If your slides move smoothly and don't feel scratchy or bump at any time you push them in and out, they probably don't need grease, but let's say they do. So to demonstrate, I'm going to take the first valve slide out and apply some grease. You take your slide grease that's in one of these little containers just like that. You can buy these at your local music shop or order them online. Take a small amount of grease and you're going to put it on the scuffed up part or the not shiny part of the slide. Go all the way around just like this and do the same to the other side of the slide. All right, now it's important to remember that you might under grease your slide, in which case the grease really won't do that much to help uh, keep the instrument running smoothly. You might over grease it, and while that isn't bad for the instrument, it might get grease all over the instrument on your hands and on other undesirable surfaces throughout your school or your practice room. So. We know that if we have too much grease on the slide, we globs of grease on the slide. And if we know that there's too much, or too little rather, it won't look like there's any grease at all. The surface might even look dry. But this is the perfect amount of grease. So we'll put the slide right back in, and it should be good to go. It's also important to remember to clean your mouthpiece. You can do that by putting a little bit of dish soap on a mouthpiece brush and running the mouthpiece under lukewarm water and inserting the mouthpiece brush in and out a few times through both sides of the mouthpiece like that. Lastly, you want to remember to take your instrument to a professional repair technician at your local instrument shop, let's say a minimum of once per year, because they have equipment that will be able to reach uh, spots in your instrument that are dirty uh, in places that you cannot get. Now, what do we know about the instrument, what parts of what, and how to take care of it, Let's look at how to hold the instrument in the most comfortable way possible. Welcome to the practice room. Let's talk about how to properly sit and hold your tuba or euphonium. To hold the euphonium, 
be sure to take your thumb and loop it around the thumb rest. The next three fingers are assigned to the first, second, and third valve with the pinky floating freely wherever it's most comfortable to you. The left arm will come around and give the euphonium a hug. Now that we're ready to play, let's talk about correct posture. Have your feet firmly planted on the floor, about shoulder width apart, and sit up straight on the edge of your chair. Now, because I'm taller, I'll have to bring the euphonium to my face. If you're a bit shorter, you can move the euphonium up to your, uh, up your, up your knee until it is level with your face. For some people, having a tuba stand to support the weight of the euphonium is the best option. Again, you can bring the instrument to you by moving the stand closer. You might have to move a little bit further up in your chair to make this option work, but it's definitely possible. Holding a tuba is roughly the same as holding a euphonium. The thumb wraps under the slide. Your fingers are aside to each of the valves and your pinkies are to flow freely wherever it's comfortable. Your left arm comes around and gives the instrument a big hug and you bring the instrument to you. You can do that by moving the tuba stand closer to you. Now, again, you might have to slide a little bit further up your chair to make this option work, but that's all right. And that's how to hold and sit correctly to play your tuba or euphonium. Now that we've talked about how to hold your instrument properly, let's talk about how to keep it safe. It's very important to keep your instrument in its case at all times, and you should only set it on the floor if you absolutely have to. To set your euphonium or tuba properly on the floor, place it slides up with the bow and the tip of the bell resting on the floor. Again, it's very important to put the euphonium or tuba in its case unless it, the case is not an option. Do not put the euphonium or tuba on the bell because that increases the probability it could tip over and dent the bow of your instrument and make it unplayable. When you put your instrument in your case, and you can see the pictures right here, make sure that it fits to the form of the case correctly. If you cannot close your case easily, the instrument is most likely not seated correctly in the case. Don't put music, books, anything like that in the case that could potentially crush your instrument. While most cases have a slot for a mouthpiece inside, some might not. To keep your mouthpiece safe, as well as the instrument, keep the mouthpiece out of the case and purchase one of these wonderful portable mouthpiece holders from any local music shop. And you can also get them online. So, now that we've talked about how to keep the instrument safe, let's look at other great accessories to increase the lifetime of your instrument. Let's take a look at some other great accessories that you can purchase for your instrument. At KBI, we have an assortment of valve oils readily available for purchase. Feel free to try one or all of them out and see which one works best for you and your instrument. We also have slide grease. Now this you might remember from the previous video on how to keep your slides in working order. Be sure to have one of these on you at all times so your slides never get caught up. Also available, we have a mouthpiece brush. Again, you might remember from the previous video. These brushes are used to clean your instrument, but it's probably best if you don't try to do that by yourself, unless an instrument repair technician, a private instructor, or your band director has shown you how to do so. There's also an instrument polishing cloth available for purchase here at the shop. Now, be sure to pick up one of these before your concert so your instrument can shine. Now, most instrument repair shops will have one of these, and at KBI, we have one for every instrument. This is an instrument care kit. And this contains everything I just showed you. Valve oil, slide grease, a cleaning snake, a casing brush, and an instrument polishing cloth. It's truly a great deal. And I recommend that every beginning band student pick one of these up. Also available, we have the brass budding. And 
These are great for using at home or at school. You can empty your, uh, the water key onto this sponge and it will keep both the floor in your practice room and your band hall nice and clean. We also have a mouthpiece pouch. And these are great for just transporting your mouthpiece around between home and the band room. It keeps it from denting up the instrument should your mouthpiece uh, not be able to fit inside of the designated slot in the case, or if you have to transport it between, again, home or your band room, great accessory. At KBI, we also have a tuba rest. And you might remember this from the posture video. This keeps the weight off of your knees and distributes it to this very handy stand. And of course, last but not least, at KBI, you can pick up the most important accessory for free, the pencil. Thank you for watching the Tuba Euphonium maintenance video. I'm Jack Earnhardt, and from all of us here at KBI Music Shop, be sure to play your song. Thanks for watching today. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at kbimusicshop.com or call us at 540-891-7800. Our staff would love to help you out. Also, check out our website. It's www.kbimusicshop.com for a PDF of this video's information and for all your musical needs. Let us help you play your song.